Hi, this is Monica Burns with Moroli Design Services. I often see authors asking questions about MailerLite, MailChimp, and other systems as to what's the best, and most of the time it's personal preference or what you can afford. While MailChimp does give you 2,000 free to begin with, and MailerLite only gives you 1,000, it's still cheaper at MailerLite to use their system in an overall long-term situation, primarily because their software or their application is much more dynamic than MailChimp. I thought what I would do is give you kind of a really, try to do a really quick video on what MailerLite looks like on the inside and how I use it for myself and for my clients uh, for doing their newsletters. Um, this is your basic dashboard, the very first thing that opens up, and this is where you'll create campaigns. If you've already created a campaign, it'll show up here. Um, you have drafts, you have what is sent and what's actually waiting. Then you have your subscribers, and you can break out your subscribers in different groups. MailChimp does the same thing, although I just don't feel it's as um, well laid out. They also have forms that are really, it's a lot more helpful. If they're easy to find, I mean, it's right up here. MailChimp makes you jump through hoops to get to stuff. They have embedded forms where you can let me see if I can go to my website um, to show you. This is an embedded form. It's actually here on my main home page. And actually, it's on any page you go to. If you flip to a different thing, it's in the sidebar. So that stays where it is. Then you have landing pages where you can customize. I've customized my own landing page and I've made it change it based up for any other different kind of books other than my historicals. I do paranormal and I'm getting ready to start a or release a contemporary series. <clears throat> you can also do these embedded forms on Facebook. So that's another good thing. The the real juicy part of MailerLite is their automated system. And by automated, I mean when you have someone who joined your newsletter, you want to send them a welcome email. If you have free content, that's when you want to send it. You want to send it right away. And it's also a good way of getting somebody to join is by offering a free book if you have it available or just a free short story. Even if all you do is write a free short story to attach or for them to download a book funnel or instant freebie, this is, this is how to do it. Just to show you how easy it is to create an automated distribution for your free books. I'm going to create something really fast um, and dirty, and it's not going to be anything I'm going to keep. But I'm just going to create a new workflow. And I'm just going to name it Test, or Demonstration, Demo. And I want it to be triggered. There are different triggers that you can do, but I'm going to have one when somebody subscribes to the newsletter, or so you select a particular group. One thing that I didn't do starting out that I wish I had realized and understood was that when you have someone sign up for your newsletter, particularly with automation, you should put them in a specific group assigned to where they signed up for. For instance, I have website sign up, I have my landing page, I have uh, signatures, sign-ons from my forever um, HEA website that's a subsidiary of my business. I have my sign-ups from my digital books that I have separated out. That way I can kind of keep an eye on, find out who's actually signing up in my books for my newsletter. And then I have different promos that I participate in and I will segment those out into their own groups. So for instance, I did a promo for in April called Fill Your Kindle. And I'm going to 
select for this group, I would normally create a new group, but I'm just going to use this one as an example. And I'm going to save it. <clears throat> and it automatically puts up and says, when a subscriber joins this group, the next step is what's going to happen. And I'm going to send them an email. And that email is going to be welcome to Monica's newsletter. Although I do something a little bit more spicy uh, with a call to action in the subject line. Now you can create your own with a drag and drop editor. You can use rich text if you want. You can create your own HTML if you like. It's all up to you. They also offer you templates that you can use to go in and make modifications to. Or you can click on recent emails and because I already have automation set up I'm going to go in because my automations generally use the same types of emails for most of the automation. It's generally just the very first one that's different. For example, if someone signs up at um, the My Forever HEA website, they're going to get something similar to this because it's going to remind them, okay, hey, this email is coming from Monica because you were here at this My Forever HEA. <clears throat> Same thing goes for, let me scroll down and see if I can find some from a different, uh, here's one. This is another book promo that I've, I'm in currently, and this just tells them, reminds them where they got the actual note from or where they actually signed up for the free book. So for this particular one I'm just going to use this particular template just to show you and then it's already set up in terms of welcome and if you don't want to subscribe and here's a free book. So once you've got the email in place you then want to select a delay because you want the email, the very first email in your newsletter you want to go out right away. You want them to get that newsletter with that free book and have them open it. And then you're going to sit back and you're going to wait, make the system wait a few days. And I generally wait, well, maybe five. Some people say you should do sooner, but I like to give people the benefit of the doubt that maybe, just maybe, they clicked while they were on the phone and they prefer to download at their computer give them the option, you know, give them some flexibility, some room to breathe. So I wait five days and this now is the true beauty of MailerLite. You can do this in MailChimp but it's so much harder. You can set a condition. <clears throat> the condition would be either from a custom field, membership, campaign activity, workflow activity is where we're going to be working because I want to make sure that they actually clicked on an email or a link in this particular email. So I select this email as you can see. It's kind of hard. These um, text is small. And so define condition. Welcome to Monica's newsletter and then I want to make sure that they have a specific link clicked and that link was to the download and I tell it save. So you can see here it says welcome to Monica's newsletter had a specific link clicked meaning they clicked a specific link that I selected or chose from this particular email. If they did click they move on in the next step, in the next chain. Think of it as a chain letter in, in a sense. Yes, they did do something. So you're going to send them another email right away that says, oh, by the way, have another book on me. And you design the email. And I'm just going to grab something. No, no, I'm not because I don't, that'll confuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Go here and uh, just grab whatever. Select. <clears throat> uh, 
and tell it done editing. And so if they click on this link, it, the system knows it and the system will say, okay, did they? If they did, they're going to get this particular email. If they didn't, I create another delay of say, I'll give them another five days. Some people do let it sit there. And then I will create another condition where the condition is, are, did they open up, did they click on a link here? You're going to get that newsletter, click on the specific link, and the link is to the book. Save it. <clears throat> and if they say, if the system says, oh yeah, by the way, they clicked on that link, hooray. I go in and I create another email for them to receive, which is going to be the same thing as this email. Have another free book on me. Design the email. Going back into the automations, it takes a minute here. And select it. It's a nice thing that they show you what you've used in the past too, so it's easy to, to select. You don't have to rebuild it. And so, voila, there it is. Now, if again they didn't click on the link, and there's no, there's no sign that they are doing anything at all, you can, at that point, you can send an email that says, um, by the way, did my book hit your spam folder? And you design the email. And automation. System's running a little slow tonight. Nope. And where would that be? I will just grab this one. I'm not sure that it's correct. And it doesn't matter. So, you now have an email that says, hey, by the way, did you not get the email? If you didn't, here's the link again. And again, you give them another delay of, say, three days at this point. And if they, you then do another question, another condition, where you ask them again, did they open this particular email? Workflow. Did my book hit your spam folder? Was it even opened? Actually, we'll do a specific link because not everybody can Mail systems don't always show you that somebody has opened an email. There are a lot of systems out there that wind up blocking the mail service's ability to tell whether or not somebody's opened it up. But they'll always know if they clicked on a link. So we've done the spam letter. Did it hit your spam? Wait three days. See if they open a specific link's been clicked. If they have, yay, hooray. Then you create a new email form. If they haven't at this point, I kind of figure they're pretty much a lost cause at this point, but I will put them into a specific, I'll move them to a group. I'll move them out of this current group, move from the current group, and I will put them in a probation group. And that's where they end and they go into this probation group to for me to handle at that point with an email that says hey you signed up for X newsletter and if you're interested in continuing that's great here just click on here and make it easy for you and that's all there is to the automation MailChimp is much more complicated than the way this is set up so I just kind of wanted to share with you all how it works. 
because I know that there are a lot of people that are interested and sometimes it's easier to actually see something and see it in action when it's author specific. You can companies can do all their little mail order or their mail lists or uh, videos for you, but they're not specific to authors necessarily, and that's something that's pretty important. So I hope you found this video um, interesting and helpful. And if for some reason you are interested in having me help you out with whatever, I specialize in social media in terms of doing automated posts for um, authors for a really reasonable fee. You get um, three posts a day so you don't have to worry about it. It's all automated and I pull um, new fresh content from Pinterest using links um, so there's no question in terms of any kind of copyright issue um, because I'm linking to the Pinterest graphics and that's my little pitch there. So hopefully this video was of help to you. Thanks for watching.